Mwambu William, the person who is going to coordinate things here. And we shall manage time in order to discuss certain issues here. We shall discuss on government action vis-a-vis -vis civil reactions. As far as uh, phone tax is concerned, and some other things that we have got in that are bringing problems. Not too long ago, the Minister of Territorial Administration also talked of uh, people who want to buy machets and other things that are of uh, maybe iron based have to, are supposed to show some documents. And some of these decisions that the government takes at time, we shall be looking at them. We also, we, are, we shall also discuss on the reaction of all the actions of the government as far as those who have left Cameroon and have gone to other countries, prior the US of A, to seek asylum because of the Anglophone crisis and other things who have been brought back. That we shall discuss on the first topic. Secondly, we shall discuss, the second topic, we shall discuss on the University of Boya and the Bulu land Tosu that they have been fighting on. So many reactions have been coming from maybe the grassroots people and some of those who are in the government platform. We shall also be talking briefly on the regional elections in Cameroon. Then the academic year, if we have time. So at this time, let's look at, I want to begin with two Sekufo the government actions vis-a-vis -vis civil reactions. We shall begin, as I said, we have about three things to discuss on this. Let's look at, first of all, the phone tax that uh, was put by the minister in charge, although it has been cancelled by the Secretary General at the Presidency. Now, if you look at some of these decisions taken by the government, what's your take? Um, first of all, a government that is moved by people who cannot move is bound to make the kind of mistakes they are making. It is not new that the government will come up with things of this nature because many others have been coming. You just mentioned the kind of law that was passed by the Minister of Territorial Administration, Minister Paul Atanganji, who said matches are on the road. You must obtain a license from the DO before you can possess one. So with that, it was, it was evident that the floodgate of similar laws are going to come up. But I want to say that it was shocking to know that at a time where the world is moving towards digitalization, Cameroon is struggling to move back to an analog society. That is why we see when the law was being passed, it, was, it is one of the laws that we want to see the youth have actually reacted so vividly without being manipulated by any politician. We saw the youth coming out because of the conviction. We saw them coming out because of their expertise in their different fields of knowledge that they understood that that law is going to be a handicap to the nation, being economically and for personal reasons. We want to say the law per se was a regressive law. A regressive law puts the body in the poor suffer more than the rich. I want to say a country where we are talking about um, promotion of e-learning. We want to say e-learning goes with gadgets. And the smartness of your gadget depends on how fast you can carry out your learning process. And if we want to say that the phones were taxed 30 percent, it was arbitrary. And again, shifting the burden of tax from the manufacturers and sellers to the consumers, it was something that was can never be welcome, even if the suspension they have to reimpose it, which I know or I think cannot come to, to, to place again. But I want to say it's something that could not go operationally because 30% is arbitrary. Cameroon will be the first country, if I will not be making a mistake in Africa, that I want to see that consumers pay direct tax. We know that consumers will pay tax based indirect. And when taxes are being paid indirectly, you don't feel the burden. But any time a tax is being paid directly, the burden is actually heavy. It was not even a five percent tax. It was not even a five percent taxation to the physical um, amount of the, the property you have to purchase. But we are talking here about thirty thousand francs. So again, Mr. Mwambo, want to say that we want to applaud the government to have given a listening ear, not to crumble the house because the tax system was leading to an aspect that in days to come. Cameroon would have been a state that would have been difficult to define because it was gaining momentum and you could not vividly describe 
what could happen in the days ahead. Considering that a country that is made up of 25% of the youth is a country that is very proactive. And if this youth have to take action, we want to say that the 15% or the 25% aging population cannot stop that kind of reaction. So we want to say that it's a, it's a stitch in time. What the government has done is a stitch in time. Looking further to that, we want to say that economically, this taxation policy was going to cripple the economy of Cameroon. Because we want to see um, parastatus uh, like MTN, we want to talk about big investment companies like MTN Orange. If care is not taken, they were going to go bankrupt or they were going to collapse. They were going to collapse. And again, their servers were going to have a different way to be hacked. And their trustworthiness will have, they would have lost the credibility of the society. Because like the issue of the youth, there was already technological advancement to see how this tax could be beaten technologically without going an outright non-civil uh, civil disobedience to the law itself. Other uh, parameters were being put in place. We want to say that first, it was, be, it was going to be an average. You can deduct critic from my account. MTN, uh, my contract with MTN is to supply me a SIM. I pay for the credit they give me. I use them. I have to mandate them. So becoming with that imposition nature that you must deduct my money to pay a tax is, is one of not, it is not part of the contract. People, we engage ourselves with MTN, Nextel, or Orange. And we're going to see that in the long run, this we're going to have a lot of repercussion. So it's a stitch in time. I want to say we should give an applause to that. But I want to say such mistakes should not repeat itself again. Because many things that have happened in places like Sudan, Algeria, Tunisia, we know of the Arab, Arab Spring, all started because of kind of decision, because a few individuals think that they are more important than the general nation, and think they can take a decision because some of them belong to the, uh, the club of Tuatez, the national club of Tuatez, which making money and taking state money that has to be used for other developmental aspects is made for particular use, and they think things it will not bother them because they have a bank where you can withdraw and no person questions you. But many Cameroonians are living from hand to mouth. I want to say the government should be tactical in taking decisions that relate to the common man. Okay, let me get to Dr. Busi, although uh, we shall be getting to the wranglings as far as uh, government officials are concerned because we know this tax has been cancelled by the Secretary General at the Presidency who we believe has a signature of the President. But I would first of all like us to look at the, some of these decisions that our government officials take that will come to this. What's your take about that? Uh, Mr. Moderator, if we had uh, an independent uh, legislature, it would have been very, very good. Because I feel that laws like this uh, should be passed in parliament and then parliamentarians deliberate. And also parliamentarians should see the interests of the people. But we find ourselves in a country of law. It, is our, the respons it was the responsibility of our parliamentarians to see the impact, the consequences of this phone tax, Mr. Moderator. So I'm just uh, telling our organ of government, uh, the legislative, that they have a role to play in uh, decision making and policy making of this country. And the policy they make should affect the common man positively, especially the phone tax. And we know that the phone now is a necessity, and we cannot do without the phones. And I thank, uh, I want to use this opportunity to thank uh, the President of the Republic uh, to recognize that uh, the phone burden was on the common people, and he was so, so to see that uh, the Secretary General of the Presidency, uh, Fernand Gongo, wrote a communique to the Prime Minister's office through the Secretary General of the Prime Minister's office to see that uh, the phone tax uh, should, should be suspended and other modalities should be looked up upon the phone tax, not that the payment will not go through. So they say the phone tax has just been suspended. But we are praying that in the days ahead, uh, I know that the President of the Republic, President Paul Bia, will see that the phone tax is totally cancelled. Uh, Mr. Mudreto, looking at the phone tax uh, detailly, let me recount how it started. Uh, the phone tax issue never started today. It was already part of the finance law of the country, and it was already to be implemented on the 15th of this month. Of this month, yeah. And uh, people decried, many people decried this. 
And uh, today, the President of the Republic, President Paul B, has suspended the tax. And when you look at the phone tax, uh, Mr. Modretto, it was because, as a result of the fact that many dealers with phones, especially those who import phones abroad, uh, most of them smuggle phones into the country, especially at the port authority uh, with customs. They were not paying, they were, most phone dealers did not pay their tax, their direct tax. So the government saw it that it was a burden on the government. And the government saw it that government should look for other means so that uh, this money that is being smuggled by the phone dealers should be recovered in the state budget. But I feel that uh, this decision was not really the best to see the burden on the consumer because I know that consumer protection is very, very important. I'm looking at the end result that government has been able to see that this tax is suspended. But even if the tax are put on the goods before imported, yes. it is still on the consumer, yes. which she was just trying to use another model of getting what the government is supposed to okay. get. Okay, it, it works like this, Mr. Modretto. Uh, those people who register their phone, who, re who pay their tax, mm -hmm. especially phone dealers, and register it at, with, with the customs. If you and I buy a phone like a search mm -hmm. that was already registered with the custom, you will not pay the phone tax. You will not have that burden. The phones that were smuggled, because I listened to a senior custom official yesterday on Cameroon calling. So phones that were smuggled and brought into the country, that, were, that taxes were not paid. So such phones, you now, the, the government now made it as such, that you now, the consumer, now pays the, ta the tax directly to the government. And how do you do it? The government was supposed to put now a software that when you buy a phone that has not been registered, that custom duties have not, has not been paid, you now pay 30%. That, that's what happened. But I feel that it is not you, the, the consumer, that is supposed to suffer such, such a burden. Government is, already, government is supposed to look for other modalities to see that these people, these phone dealers, pay their, uh, they pay the price for it. And... Let me say, for example, many persons don't buy phones today. Your brothers might be abroad and send you a phone, and that phone is not even registered. They give you a gift, and now you even pay about 30%. <laughs> you, start, you, start, you, you start paying taxes for something that's been given as a gift. So I think that government saw it that uh, the consumer who suffers the effects should not pay such a tax. So the only thing I want to say here is that at the end of the day, the consumer will not pay such a tax. And I appreciate the government for coming in very fast because this would have been so. This would have been a dreadful we, we be impact. This would have been a dreadful impact on the consumer, the person who consumes. Because I myself, I was thinking of buying an Android phone, but when the phone tax came up. I said, no, I will not buy any phone because I cannot buy a phone and pay a tax on the phone. So what about the common man? What about somebody in the village that has 10000 to buy a phone that is not even an Android phone? I start paying about 3000 for a tax. So I, I'm, I thank God that the President of the Republic was aware of this and he sent a communicator that is very fast to suspend this. And okay. I pray that in the days ahead, this should not only be suspended, but the phone tax should be cancelled. Thank you to the head of state. Okay. <laughs> Let me come to you, Mr. Item. If you if you look at this uh, phone tax, by all evidence, as he said, it showed that uh, it's not only with such gadgets, but so many other goods usually come into the country that uh, the taxes are not paid for. But don't you think that is a serious weakness on the regime or the government or those who are put in place to follow up all this? Um, you might feel that way. What I used to tell people is that uh, even politics is a game of interest. And yeah. When it comes into issues like this, people used to look at their personal interests. You know, the government, uh, one way of raising finance is more or less with taxes. Mm -hmm. And once, um, I think that is one of the main ways in which the government raises its yeah. uh, revenue. So now they have realized that uh, there is more and more mm -hmm. uh, increase in the yeah. usage of phone and many other gadgets and they feel that that could be a lucrative means mm -hmm. of making uh, money especially with the high need of uh, uh, the government to have money to solve mm -hmm. its numerous problems that it has in the country 
So I want to, I wish to, before I come to your question, to drill the listeners on how it was alleged the phone tax will operate. Mm -hmm. That once uh, you want to import the phone, you have to make sure that at the uh, custom, uh, at the end, into, at your point into the entry into yeah. uh, in the country, you have to make sure that you register your phone with uh, the custom mm -hmm. officers. But if you don't, and once you, if you don't do that, anybody who buys such a phone and inserts in his phone, once the EMI is detected, yeah. automatically that person will pay. And it was alleged that they will be paying 33% of the price of that phone. Yeah. Now, 33%, for example, a phone that will be bought for 150,000 francs might be subjected to a tax of 50,000 francs. francs. Meaning that, in this sense, uh, it's more or less the phone dealers might li likely increase the price to 200,000 because they are not taking into consideration the price of the, 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 the people that who sold the phone to the mm -hmm. retailers because the company has, they have not consulted the company in the course of making their law as to whether they should consider their prices because of this. So in that sense, it was going to lay a lot of weight on the consumer. Yeah. And this law to me is a, a juice in REM. That is, it will put, a, it's a bad law to the whole world, not okay. only to Cameroonians, because... That's a legal... Uh, uh, yeah, it's a legal jargon, okay. a Latin maxim, which okay. means that it's a bad... A, a something bad law. Yeah, to okay, the whole world. Law. Now, if you look at the laws, Malafide, because it did not uh, take into consideration the interests of the good citizens of Cameroon who wish to use the very gadgets mm -hmm. to improve technology and, I mean, to, 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 to uh, exploit the technology of today yeah. and to make an end. Okay. To, to their living, to their survival, taking into consideration that it's high unemployment. Mm -hmm. Some people use this gadget to scam. Some people use this gadget, even though I'm not legalizing any scamming here, but mm -hmm. th those are means of survival for young Cameroonians that, that they do. Encouraged. I'm not encouraging anything here, but I'm just aligning you how the, the, realis the, real the, the, the reality on ground today. Some use this phone for academic purposes. For example, yes. you realize that with the recent uh, 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 coronavirus, uh, uh, intrude into our, our nation, schools were banned and most youths youth were left with their androids to follow up lessons. So once this kind of law is put, the government did not look at it from this angle. That is why we say that delegated legislations are bad. Delegated legislations, you know, government officials who pass this delegated legislation do not take into consideration. Most of them are misled because they don't have, they, 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 they don't have a mastery of the law. They are just there uh, uh, they are just advised by those their advisors, mm -hmm. ministry, ministry advisors, on what they ought to do. They they are not they, they are not. But I believe every ministry who, has a legal advisor. Yeah, they, 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 they are not doing their work. The, the, yeah. the difficulties with delegated legislation is that it's not debated. Okay. Yes, in parliament they debate a law. You know, one bad thing with this law is that even the parliamentarians were annoyed. Yes, many parliamentarians were annoyed. Okay. Yeah, many of them were annoyed with such laws and even uh, uh, other Cameroonians of goodwill because of the way the, the, the law will have effect on Cameroonians, considering the high poverty rate in the country as well. So to me, I feel that it was a good step taken by uh, the Secretary General mm -hmm. at the presidency, that is a uh, Ngongo, yeah. to, 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 to we shall become such, But I, I wish to get law. something. Before these goods come into the country, eventually these taxes are already on the goods. Not so. Now, if they are targeting those goods that have not been, or the taxes have not been paid, does it make it, uh, uh, does it skyrocket the tax on the goods? Because I believe they were targeting but those ones that have, uh, the taxes have not been put, uh, have not been paid. There is one thing I want to say, Mr. Mwambo. I have always um, stood against aging governance and aging dominance. Mm -hmm. And I'll repeat that a country that is moved by people who cannot move will always have lapses. When you say it, I want to say, Cameroon operate like any other state in the world. I want to say when people are employed, they should put in diligence in everything they are doing. I don't see why custom officials will be saying, it's true. There must always be smugglers in every country. If you say people should not ride, they say, Lord, that you should not drive without the license, but there are people driving without license. So which means there will always be people of that magnitude. But the government should put all strategies and remedies to make sure that percentage is small. Mm -hmm. But you will not, because of your, 
your inability to track zone crime. And now you are punishing Cameroonians of goodwill. You are punishing Republican citizens. Rather than, com uh, but, 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 that, that, rather than doing your job. Yeah. Because here we are seeing that people don't want to do their job. And the easiest way they want to do is to relax and punish people who don't even know what is happening. Yes, one way of the government raising revenue is through taxation, which is one of the major dimensions. We have been paying tax on phone. That is something we can't say no. Anything a consumer purchases, that's why we say it's an indirect tax. The burden is not, you don't feel the, the burden. When we say that the government must go back into a drawing book, look into ways that they must upgrade the standard of things that come out, they are checking points. The custom, if they think that our custom don't have enough training, then they should open a school that can best train them. Because what they are trying to tell the population is that they think that the education that is given to Cameroonian custom is very limited. To say that people who have been put to check things that come into the nation cannot do their job, and now the population have to suffer because you have put people without competency to handle things that demands a lot of diligence and ability. So you are saying that the minister was trying to punish uh, the, I, wrong, I, I, the, um, wrong, the wrong people? The minister was not trying. The law was already gearing yeah. and punishing yeah, the, wrong the, the wrong persons. Because what we want to see is that they don't want to do their job. Mm -hmm. The government should put in place mechanism that will check. Like we rightly put it, Cameroon is not producing funders that will say that we want to protect infant industry. We don't have a production site in Cameroon. There is nothing in Cameroon that I know at the moment that like, I, I can even guess that maybe in the next three years to come that maybe we'll start having a phone um, compiling industry in Cameroon. We don't have any. So struggling to put that kind of law in itself does not have any moral, economic political or legal dimension to even be admitted by even any, 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 any person. Be, they have no basis. Could that be a short cause to embezzlement? Uh, embezzlement is something that's really happening in Cameroon. So it's not a short cause. I want to say that it's just another way for money to come for other people to get. Like, even it, about it, we want to say we are struggling to fight corruption in the country. We, you see, in Kondengi, we talk about Operation APV, mm -hmm. the policy of recall and moralization that has been put in place by the head of state. That took so many people to... But I want to see that you, we lost like this promote corruption from the grassroots itself. For example, the phone law came, it hasn't even been for, for days. Yeah. But you, people say they have been going to shop and shop owners are asking them to pay tax at the shop. Mm -hmm. So you start asking yourself... Phone stands have been there for one year. Yes, you come, you want to buy, and the <laughs> shop owners... I got a friend telling me that I went to buy a phone and the shop owner said I should pay my tax directly. They will start asking that, you see, a lot of other things were going to open. So I want to say that it's teaching time. We are grateful for the stage that has been made, that this law has been suspended. I will pray that it should be a good buy to it, that the population will not hear about it again. I want to say so that the government, shows take some, corruption the government should take many things into okay. consideration. Let me come the to youth you. owns this country for today. They are not the leaders of tomorrow. This is their generation, and they are going to govern it. Okay, let, let me come to Dr. Busi. If we look at it, could it be that these um, uh, custom officials, uh, at times they can't do their work effectively given the broad nature of the border. Exactly. I was coming to that. Yeah. Uh, when you look at uh, our customs, uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, our, our borders, there's a high rate of piracy mm -hmm. in our borders. Go to our borders with, with Equatorial Guinea and so on. We have high rate of piracy in our borders and we feel that uh, our customs they go to Enam, they are being trained there, and such works cannot be done by the custom alone. Our borders need to be close. Uh, and I, I feel that, uh, Mr. Moderator, when you look at uh, issues like this with phone dealers, it's so very complicated because there are people who enter the country with phones as if they are bush followers, but they are coming with the phones to sell. And the government, many at times, even the government will not understand. And there are other persons like companies, because you have companies in Cameroon like Intel and others. Those companies are legally known. And they pay their phone tax. But there are others that buy box, box of phones in other countries. They even smuggle them through Nigeria. Let's look at things from all perspectives. So government is trying to, government was looking for a means to recover all these taxes. But the truth is that uh, the consequences of this was not good because at the end of the day, the common man who suffers the effect. Even diplomats, do you know that diplomats, diplomats, they can import things without payment. Top government officials, they, ha they have the right to import without payment. So at the end of the day, the people who suffer the effect is you and I. 
And my only problem with this phone tax was that we are living in digital periods. And it will be very difficult for a student to buy, to, uh, to struggle to afford for a phone for 40,000 francs and wants to pay a phone tax for about, let me say, for about uh, 20,000 francs. It will be very difficult, especially now that we are working with digitalization. And the issue is that phones that are being imported to the country without being registered, without being pay, uh, custom duties being paid. When people go now to buy the phone, there's already an electronic digital payment that when you insert your SIM card, automatically it signals to you and you cannot even use that phone. So government was looking for a mechanism to recover the payment of taxes. But I feel that that was not the best means. Our, it is the responsibility of the customs to look for other means in which they can uh, get to this contraband. Because some of these goods are contraband goods. Some of these goods that customs duties are not paid. The government suffers the consequences. So looking at this phone tax, consumers protection is very, very important. And consumers are not, the, especially in commerce, consumers are not the one to pay direct taxes. Okay, before we look at this asylum thing, let, let's now times take decisions when they must have discussed in their forum. But do you see a kind of rankings? Do you see a kind of ranking uh, amongst the administrators, the ministers of Cameroon? You know, uh, one thing that is obvious yeah. is that uh, there is uh, administrative In the constitution, the very lax nature of the separation of power in this country. And if you look at it from this dimension, every ministry is at one point almost left on its own to manage its uh, affairs at one point. In that case, a minister putting up this decision is getting more money to the government and, on the other hand, getting more attention from the government for its good work. And then, but um, when you look at it entirely, you realize that. Uh, in this case, uh, came into play like the, the Minister General at uh, uh, the presidency. So said, no, Cameroonians are crying power over such laws and they feel that it is not good. Mm -hmm. In this case, it, it will be more or less saying that you give respect to who respect is due. Yeah. Because once you give this kind of law, at the same time you are coming back to your word, you might lose a particular respect. So a higher authority, just like you people fight or you want to you want to get something and you give respect to your father to make such outing. So I don't see it purely from the angle of wrangling, but I see it purely from the angle of giving respect to a higher because authority. Once, to yes, if there was that respect, we know the prime minister has called ministers and even directors not to take certain decisions that they have not agreed because they have a council of ministers and so on. Because it came at one time, every minister was just going on air and seeing everything, doing anything. Yeah. Did you see? Yeah, I think, you know, ministers are within, uh, in the offices, they are their boss. They don't depend on a higher boss to do outings. It's just that once an outing is somehow harsh, it's somehow harsh. Yeah. In that case now, the higher authority might set into moderate. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that any decision that you are taking, you must always consult. In that case, you will no longer be a, a kind of, you will no longer yeah, be the yeah. boss of your office. Let, mm -hmm. let, let me just uh, try to answer what you said, Mr. Mm -hmm. Wambo Williams. Uh, there's a council of ministers. Yeah. Uh, within the council of ministers, the prime minister is the head of government. Yes. And many a times, uh, in the Council of Ministers, you know your area of jurisdiction, in your ministry. Mm -hmm. But the issue is that you don't talk anyhow to. There are issues of governance that you cannot go on air, or issues of policies mm -hmm. you cannot go on air and talk. That it is the Prime Minister that has the right to talk, mm -hmm. or the Minister of Communication. Mm -hmm. Because the Minister of Communication is the eye of the Presidency. So ministers, though we have ministers, they are ministers. And ministers are according to their rank. That's why we have the Minister of State, 
we have, uh, we have a minister and we have uh, a secretary general. So mm. ministers are in, in terms of rank, but at the end of the day, the prime minister is the head of government. But we have seen situations where, prime, uh, where some ministers go on air and talk where they were not supposed to talk, mm. where it was a position of the prime minister to even talk. Le let me say, for example, the prime minister chair is a chair of COVID-19. And a mi a min let me say, a minister cannot just get up and start talking without taking power from the prime minister to talk. So they have to respect hierarchy. But looking at the phone tax in which we are talking today, we know that we have a president of the republic, President Paul Beer. And it is by delegation that President Paul Beer gave power to the Secretary General to sign the suspension of the phone tax. Okay. And the president and, and he sent that communicate to the Prime Minister's office. And people were conflicting that. Why was the, the, the document sent back to the Secretary General of the Prime Minister's office, not to the Prime Minister? Prime Minister who is the head so of that government. Is, that is where the question mark lies. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. There's one thing, Mr. Mwambo. We want to say that Cameroon is a very relaxed state. That <laughs> the government officials or the regime has backed out from working from the general, for the general good of the people or for the general good of the country. We want to see ministers who are treating Cameroon like Cameroon is not their father's land. They are treating Cameroon like they are foreigners that are just called upon to govern. They are like colonial masters. That's how some of the people in the regime are treating Cameroonians. They don't feel like they belong to this country because they have bought estates in Dubai and other countries. And whatever happened here is not their concern because they can always travel back to where they actually consider their home. If we want to look into this, we want to say that power by itself is too centralized. And when there is a total decentralization of power within different ministries, people will function according to their capacity. That is why we say meritocracy will replace mediocrity. Because at the moment, most decisions are coming because of the aspect of mediocrity. Many people are sitting in positions that they don't even master, they don't even know what to do there. And whatever they think at a given time, they think it is right. The former Prime Minister, um, Philip Mongyang, once complained that ministers were not subordinate when he takes decisions, there were ministers who could counteract decisions. Why? Because we want to talk this about the appointment structure. The constitution says that the prime minister is the one to endorse ministers and only give the president of approval or inform the president about the decision of ministers he has chosen. But we still account... In concession with the president of course, but the power of the constitution mandated to him. That yeah. the prime minister come up with a draft list of ministers. After which, with the president. With the president. Because which, means discussion. discussion. Which means in the first case, the prime minister should be the first minister to be appointed. Okay, and yeah. other ministers are consented before they are appointed by the, the by the prime minister. But their appointments are coming almost one at the same time. So all of them see themselves equal. Some will tell you we are answerable just to the president. So in a certain time, we want to say that the prime minister is just a figurehead in a position that he's too weak to stand up. So in another aspect, he may, he may just be a bulldog who can back but cannot bite. Another aspect for ministry operating on their own and taking decisions, it's not a bad thing. Before you are sitting in the, in the head of a ministry, you should be able to know what to do and how to manage the ministry. But now we are talking because you don't have love of the country. That is why you don't even think, you don't stress your brain to know what will be good for the people and what will be bad for the people. For the minister to decide and take decisions is not a bad thing. But one thing we want to say, like we want to talk about respect of hierarchy. That decision would have come out. Experts in the ministry sat down, look at it, present it to the hierarchies, and give them how the intent is going to work. Look at it, Jordan, which doesn't mean a minister cannot take decision in that, this one. That is why we are saying you can take decisions. Yeah. But now, for people who have love for their country, you don't just take decision and you send it out. Okay. A board you seat, you, 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 a minute, me, doctor, <laughs> you make the decision, yeah. you get it back to the hierarchy, because any decision you're making, you should be able to see how it's going to work. Because everything has a side effect. Okay. And you should be able to look the side effect and the remedies that may come if this side effect has to project. So you have to present it. There must be deliberation with your hierarchies. Then you carry it to Just like to, that of uh, to Mr. Execution. Tangaji, that has not really come uh, to pass. I don't know. I think, I think, I think, I think that, know. Mr. Mbojo, uh, we, we have a topic there. And yeah. looking at the ministerial issue, we should contextualize it from our topic. Okay. And when you look at the community of the phone tax, that came out to suspend the tax and looking at other modalities on how these taxes could be paid, uh, signed by the uh, signed at the presidency, mm -hmm. you understand that the the signature it was signed by it was delegated to uh, Fen uh, Mr. Fernand Gongo, and when you look at the letter critically, you will see somewhere that urgent urgency, yes. meaning that the letter was an urgent letter, because. The government have already observed the environment. The temperature was already high. The temperature 
the issue of the phone tax was very high. And that's why the government now sent the letter immediately to those who are supposed... The presidency sent the letter immediately and put it that as a matter of urgency to those who are supposed to effect and implement. So that's why we should uh, focus on the topic. No, no, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just come in and say something. I don't want to... What were you saying here? We we're not talking about the letter. I was not talking about the letter that came from the presidency. I was talking from the originator of the tax system and how it was supposed to have been given originally before it came to implementation. Once you say that, you would have come out with modalities to inform the hierarchy. How was this task going to operate in case of, uh, of, if, of it backfires or want to talk? Because everything has side effect. In case the side effect becomes so projective, what are going to be do? So if these things were carefully deliberated upon, we would not have seen a suspension coming. And if you ask my opinion, the minister should resign. He doesn't have Cambodians at heart. No, maybe he had a very good. If you ask my opinion, he has a very good motive to raise funds for the government, but he, he, it just that the decision should resign. Not, uh, uh, let me let us look at this asylum problem now that uh, Cameroon is facing. All those who were running because of the crisis in Cameroon, as they, they claim to. Now there is this popular impression that uh, the Cameroon government is conniving with the U.S. government to make sure that those who are like talking against the government should be brought back. Maybe they will be kept somewhere. Uh, I think it's because they lack uh, a lot of facts on the issue of yeah. uh, deportation mm -hmm. of uh, 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 asylum seekers. Yeah. You know, the law on asylum seekers mm -hmm. is somehow complex yeah. that you might be tempted to blame a state for must have conspired mm -hmm. with another entity to deport its citizens. To an extent, they might feel with the grudges that they have within the state, especially with the Anglophone crisis. That is a tactical way of the government bringing it back its uh, enemies yeah. to tussle with them. But I don't look at it from that angle because once you leave from your state and you go to another state as an asylum seeker, mm -hmm. what happens is that once you are interviewed and you pass the test, mm -hmm. they might give you, uh, 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 the, you might be admitted as an asylum, you might be given documents to recognize that you, you, you have been given an asylum within that state. Yeah. But better still, you might be refused. Your application for asylum seeking might be refused. Mm -hmm. Why, however, you have already entered into the country, especially for those that are going through the Mexican gateway into US. But the worry is that despite the fact that you have entered US, yeah. you might benefit from some humanitarian gestures where you might be maintained because the issue of deportation of uh, 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 asylum seeker is somehow complex that at one point it's even more costly than even allowing them to stay within your state. So in that case now, most people who have been deported is because they never, uh, they, 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 they never uh, uh, reached the test. Yeah, they never reached the test. We are just digressing our viewers just to give you an insight on a pertinent issue that is also plaguing our nation and which is of a lot of concern. So we are saying that Asylum seekers that have been deported, it wasn't, they, were, they weren't only deported to Cameroon, but other countries, I think it was only 52 out of the, the 87 that mm -hmm. were to be brought back to Cameroon. And we are saying that the government should treat them kindly because uh, the, most of them, you will see vividly, if we want to talk mm -hmm. on asylum seekers, you will see Anglophones that have suffered this crisis yes. from Munyenge, from Kwakwa and the other. They might not even have the means to go through the routes to arrive, arrive at U.S. to seek for, 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 for asylum seeking. But you will see people who, who are classroom teachers who have abandoned their duties. On that document, you will see that some secondary, I mean some military, left their job sites and had to, to, to move to U.S. in the name of asylum seeking. How could those people be, how were those nature of people okay. affected by the crisis? So this digression, my, it was just to give our viewers an insight. We want to say that, those Cameroonians that have been brought back, it wasn't the blame on the Cameroonian government. It's Trump's policy on allowing, it's just Trump's policy yeah. of dealing with the uh, uh, asylum seekers. Trump has been hurt. That was why he even built the Mexican, uh, the Mexican war yeah. to prevent people from entering. He has been frowning. He, even the, the policy that you must have a passport before you, you, you apply for an American, uh, for an American uh, 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 lottery. It's just a policy to cut down on the people entering 